Good morning, everybody out there in Facebook land. Pastor Sean Bowman from Victory Lutheran, Jamestown, North Dakota, coming to you live with scripture and uh, some prayer. And we're going to come again at three o'clock. Uh, as you are seeing my face, uh, as you're scrolling through your phone, um, just uh, doing life this morning, uh, I would love for you to join us. Uh, there is a a wonderful group of people that love to hop on board every every day at ten o'clock, and and uh, we just get into God's Word and we study God's Word. and And yesterday, uh, I was I was uh, studying uh, this uh, this word confident. We're in First John and being confident about who we are in Christ. I, I want to just do a, a being confident part two. Uh, and uh, as as we get into that, as we as you get your Bibles and and uh, cue yourself up for the Word of God this morning in our devotional, you can turn to Psalm one thirty seven, Psalm one three seven, and uh, we're going to get into that in just a little bit. I'm just waiting for people to hop on. Hey, uh, let's sound the alarm for those people that are hopping on right now. What I need you to do is hit the like, hit the share button. That that uh, alerts all of your friends that Pastor Sean is online and uh, we're doing a devotion. And and uh, this is this is an important time to just be in God's word as we are we're stuck at home. We're we're all feeling a little bit shack wacky, a little bit crazy at times. But in the midst of the craziness, guess what, folks? In the midst of the craziness, God is <clears throat> he's up to awesome things for us. And uh, and it's it's usually those Christians that are in the Word of God, that are praying this through, hearing the voice of God, that are uh, that are ones that are that are going to be the most blessed during this whole shutdown, uh, as we uh, move ahead in Christ Jesus. Now today, uh, as we as we contemplate being confident, uh, there are many times where I will visit with people, talk to people, uh, that will say, uh, "I hope I make it to heaven." I I hope that God will uh, will be will be will be happy with with me will that that I won't disappoint God stuff like that and uh, you know our sin nature has has that that at the root of those 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 statements our sin nature is always sitting in the driver's seat pushing fear hoping that God will accept us. Uh, you know, in spite of our our wicked, sinful inclinations, and uh, the truth of the matter is, the only one acceptable to God for the the life they lived was Jesus. He was acceptable, and when Jesus came, he lived his entire life declaring to all of the people during that time, around Jerusalem, around uh, Bethlehem, where he was raised. Christ was declaring. I have come to give myself to you. My life is going to be in you. And so for those people that 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 find themselves being saved by the blood of Jesus, then the question remains, how do I live in him? How do I how do I understand him? And uh, that that's only through the word of God. We believe that God's word is inerrant and infallible. And with the inerrant and fallible word of God, when it takes root in your heart, when it's living in your heart, God's word will cause a supernatural confidence. Not in yourself, never in yourself. In fact, the confidence will, you'll push away from self and you'll push into Christ. And when you push into Christ, there is a supernatural confidence that does something unbelievable. Uh, and And, you know, to describe someone's confident as uh, uh, to, to describe someone as confident is usually meant to be a compliment. And when you say, "Oh, that person, they're so confident in themselves," usually you're trying to you're trying to pat them on the back. You're trying to tell them, you know, that's that's an amazing person that can that can be like that. But <clears throat> there is a right and a wrong confidence, and. Uh, uh, this morning, as we as we look into the right and wrong confidence, I want us to just meditate and think about the confidence that we have in Christ as compared to the confidence that we have in flesh. And uh, the wrong form of confidence involves valuing yourself, 
over others or or over God. Uh, it, 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 this is an arrogance that that you have that that you you think that somehow that that you are entitled to something and that it's it this is all about you. But there is a different kind of a confidence. That confidence involves finding yourself, finding your value in and through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says Jesus is the word, and that means that we have that word living in us. You see, confidence in the natural world is a self-reliance and deadly and dangerous. In the spiritual world, it is God's reliance. Supremely, it involves confidence in the presence of God. You see, even now, as I bring God's word to you, <clears throat> as we talk about the deeper things of God, God is here. God's working on you. And God would like to be working on your friends and neighbors too if you hit share and like. They're going to realize that you're up to something. It's a way for you to evangelize them. But I want you to think about these two kinds of confidence as we listen to Psalm 137. Listen to this. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the polars, we hung our harp. For there, our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while we are in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skills. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundation. Daughter of Babylon Boom to destruction. Happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. A little harsh. It was a confidence that was lost. Because their confidence involved a confidence of arrogance it involved a confidence of putting value for oneself aside. Israel was valuing themselves over God. And this arrogance put them into such a place of mourning, such a place of brokenness. And there's something very comforting about the raw anger that is expressed in this psalm. I mean, just go back and read it again. So, psalm 137, 1 through 9. It's incredible. It reminds me, and it is a reminder that to you, that you can be real and honest with God, that you don't need to censor your prayers. You can cry out, God knows you, He hears everything that's 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 in your heart before you even speak it. He can cope with even your darkest thoughts. But why do we cry them out? It's because God knows your thoughts, but he wants you to know your thoughts. He wants you to know the grave wickedness of your of your sinful condition and the complete and utter washing of your sins through his blood. He wants you to know it and experience. The only way you can do that is by crying out to God. You see, the people of God, they had lost their confidence in the presence of God. Kind of like America has lost its confidence in the presence of God. We've got a lot of people in this nation that are proud of the fact that they don't follow God, pray to God, worship God. They're very, very confident in science, they're very confident in, in, in our nation. But my dear friends, 
That's exactly the way Israel thought. Our confidence needs to be in Christ. And the more people that have confidence in Christ, then we can get under a constitution, live in harmony in the, the most prosperous, beautiful nation that's ever existed. But you remove Jesus from it. Confidence is gone. The psalmist is in exile in Babylon, away from Jerusalem and the temple of God. The worst thing about the exile for, for God's people was this sense of being away from God's presence. It said in verse 1, By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion in verse 1. Their violent response and desire for revenge. Treat them as they've treated us, they said in verses 8 and 9. Is a cry from the New Testament commandment to love your enemies in Matthew 5.44. But it is a cry within a lament of the people who are tormented in Psalm 137.3 and desperate for God's presence. You see, yesterday when we dove into that 1 John 3 passage, which I wanted to cue you up with yesterday. We talked about the beautiful picture of how we know that we belong to the truth. How we rest in the truth. And I talked about in chapter 1, verse 3, verse 20, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and He knows everything. In fact, if our hearts condemn us, we can rejoice in the fact that the Holy Spirit still works on us. We live in a nation where people are so cold and callous because of what they put their minds into. They're cold and callous. They've turned away from the things of God. They don't know how to repent. But my friends how we know that God's Spirit is living in us is when the Spirit comes and convicts us and we cry out to the, to the, to the Father God through His Son Jesus and we call upon His promises once again and we ask Him to forgive us of our sin and we come to Him with broken hearts Asking him to not only forgive us, but to send us into the way of the word. Into the way of the word means into a get to and not to a have to. Real freedom in this time of this whole epidemic is moving in your Christian faith from I have to do this for God, I have to go to church, I have to do the Bible to Hallelujah, I get to. I get to get into the Word. I get to go to church. I get to read the Word. I get to obey His commands and do what the Word of God says is pleasing to God. Because it's, it's, it's kind of a first-time thing when we start walking with Jesus. We see in His commandments that there are two things that are the most important things. The first is to believe in Jesus and to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And the second is to love thy neighbor. To love the person who's unlovable. To love your wife, your, your husband, your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor, the one you don't like or kind of like, the one you see sometimes, the one you wave to, but you really have never had much of a relationship with. That's love. And those are the two things that flow out of a spirit that is confident that they have been saved by the grace of God. That's the very thing that, that you can be confident in when you come to God. You can be confident because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen. Hey, I pray that you are blessed today as you heard this word, this confidence. We live in a lost and dying world, but I got a little secret for you. 
This isn't your world anyway. Your world's in heaven. We're aliens. We're passing through this time. And we're trying to take as many people with us as possible. And that means we keep going to the cross. So this morning, I want to go to the cross with you again, pray with you, to bless you as we cry out to the Lord. Because that's what we do. We just cry out to the Lord and trust Him for everything. And uh, before we do that, I just, uh, good to have you. Thanks for being with uh, me, Ray Lynn, and Shelly, and Don and Jenny, and Vicki, and Sharon, and Chris, uh, Jean and Shirley Wolf, Sherry Severson, bless you. It's good to have you guys know this. Pastor Sean loves you. Jesus loves you. Trillions, cabillions more. Loves all of us more. Because he died and rose again. He gave his life. He comes with the power of the Holy Ghost. And he wants to assure in you, move in you, touch your heart in a way that only he can do. So let's just fold our hands, bow our heads, and talk to God this morning. Father, we love you. We thank you. We know that you give us confidence. In a world that's lost and dying and sick because of sin, in a world that's so, so focused on itself that it can't, it can't see the truth. But Jesus, you said that you are the truth and you said that you come to live within us. And Lord, the best way for us to make a difference is to reach out to someone, anyone, and to just love them with a Christ-like love and to give you the glory for doing that kind of a thing. It's a, it's a very different experience for people that are touched by the grace and mercy and love of God. We know that. But in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all of that, Jesus, I pray that you would, with your mighty, powerful hand, breathe faith into your children that are listening right now. To be confident that you conquered their sin and that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, live and dwell in them. Reassure, my dear brothers and sisters, that not only are they forgiven, but they are so loved by you that you are there to create a love relationship with them that'll last forever and ever through your word, through your presence. Help my dear brothers and sisters today just lean into you to talk to you and walk with you like only you could create through your word in that love relationship between the groom and his bride. And we are your bride. We love you, Jesus. We thank you that we have confidence that you are ours and we are yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, this is Pastor Sean Bowman. Thank you. Uh, I am so glad that uh, you guys are, are, are with me here today. Uh, Darren, uh, I pray that you're getting some good sleep as you are driving and working. Thank God for our truckers. Thank God for all of the people that are out there in the front lines in medicine, for our factory workers, for the people that are keeping us, us safe and secure. It is an unbelievable gift to have such a wonderful country like ours. Such an awesome opportunity to just go into a spirit of praise and thanksgiving. And here's what I have been praising God for lately. I've been praising God for you. Every one of you are so unbelievably precious and loved. And I am so honored, no matter how bad it gets, to be able to come together under the banner of Jesus Christ through his word, to pray and believe and to seek him. It is a gift. And to do it with you, it is an honor that we get to worship our King in, in this way. And so as you go forth today, go forth with confidence that Christ, Christ has it. 
He's got it in control. He's got your life in control. He's got you confidence in the Son of God. So good to have you today. God bless you. We'll see you at 3 p.m. for prayer time. Faye and I are going to be praying and thanking Jesus for all the things that we have. And uh, we uh, so much appreciate this time together with you. Hey, if you enjoyed this, hit like, hit share. This is Pastor Sean Bowman uh, with Victory Lutheran Brethren Church, Jamestown, North Dakota, just lifting high the promises of God for God's children so they can thank the Lord this day. Have a great day. God bless.